I just emailed you back. Everybody else has taken Monday off, so we'll find another time. All right, that works. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Karen oh, Shelly. How is my favorite Californian? Ah, <laughs> I'm, I'm good this morning. Awesome. Had a nice, very long walk in, in perfect temperatures. It was great. Of course. <laughs> how are you? Really good. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's not so beautiful here today, but it is what we make it, right? You get that choice, either happy or crappy. So yep. I'm happy. I, regardless of your weather, I still love your room. It's so nice and light and bright and open. Thank you. Thank you. I do. This is my favorite room in the house, the sunroom. So Awesome. We just got done putting out flags at the cemetery because in Naperville, they canceled all of the Memorial Day things. And so they also included canceling this. So 40 of us rebels showed up and put out all the flags in the cemetery. Okay. And it's so wet outside. Like our shoes are soaking wet. I'm like, all right, we got it done anyway. Okay, so what you have is rain. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots yeah. of it. I think we had seven inches the other day, two days ago. In one day? Mm -hmm. It flooded our parking lot. You know, the dumpster floats around. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, that's, that's not a good day. I got it. I saw it really, really bad up in Michigan where, um, I don't know if you saw the, the levees broke up there and it's really bad. Yeah, not good. All right, so we've been averaging 25 to 30, but they kind of pop on as they come. Um, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to be here. Oh, it's my um, pleasure. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I, I think, you know, sometimes because you work with Prawl and she's kind of big and loud. <laughs> she's a fork. <laughs> yeah. Um, I need to make more intention to bring you forward because your story is just awesome. Um, and that, that's inspiring people to keep going and, and, and keep pushing forward is, is why I wanted to do these Zooms every day. And seriously, I was just thinking, okay, you've asked me to do a couple. What the heck am I not? Get on here. Um, so first, tell everybody where you are. Sure. And we are, we are recording. This is on our Facebook page as well. And it will be on the, um, uh, my, my channel. I'll get you the link for that. So my name is Karen Sholly and I am the co-team leader at Keller Williams Infinity in Naperville, Illinois. So most of you probably know who Karen Prawl is. I think you had her on as a guest, right? Um, and so she is the team leader. I'm her co-team leader. So we work hand in hand together, building and growing our little empire and uh, been a licensed realtor since 1992. So I'm as old as dirt. And I'm also living proof that if you can live through one shift, you can live through two, three, four, five, <laughs> right? I remember literally getting to New Year's Eve on, in uh, 2008 and thinking, we got through it. There's nothing, nothing in, in as far as the real estate world that I can't survive getting through this. Exactly. And a, and a global pandemic, pizza cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be able to go with the flow, right? Like, jab and move. <laughs> jab and move. All right. So uh, first, how you, you've been in leadership not that long. No. So I was invited into leadership in 2013. So I started, it's so hilarious. I started as an MCA. Uh, our market center was small back then. I was agent number 52 when I joined. And um, that was in 2011. And we, uh, we were, you know, we were a, a very close, tight knit group. And so um, when I got asked to be in leadership, I was all in. Who knew I was in the wrong seat on the bus? Yeah, MCA to assistant team leader. Um, Polar. That, that's a big shift. Polar opposite behavioral type. So it was very strange. But I have this tendency, they call me mama bear. And so as the MCA, not only are you responsible for the financials and making sure everybody gets paid, um, you also bring the love. And so that's where my I shined at that. So <laughs> Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, and I get the mama bear moniker too, but it's more because I. Oh, <laughs> you're a little more for my people. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, where do you want to start? I will. I will ask follow-up questions and lead you, but um, uh, the floor is yours, dear. Well, um, I guess especially um, with Memorial Day right around here, um, it's a very uh, personal weekend for myself. So. I, maybe I'll just share my story on how I kind of got to um, KW and everything. So um, got my license in 92 in Chicago, small mom and top, um, pop boutique, um, and then moved out to the, the suburbs. And 
when when doing that, I um, I really didn't have any intention of really pursuing real estate here, and then um, ended up going through a divorce. So I joined a, a local brokerage here, and fast forward, ended up getting married and having a surprise baby at 41. Woo so Woo. Um, go ahead. So my my little piece I will tell you though is that when moving from Chicago to the suburbs, um, my first year. And I had literally no training. My first year in Naperville, I didn't know a soul and I sold 5 million. So when people say they can't do it, I'm well, sorry. Well, give us perspective on that too, because 5 million there is different than 5 million here. So roughly oh, how yeah, many yeah. units was that? Oh my, I don't even remember. Um, Kristen, Wendy, how many units would that be here in Naperville now? I don't even know. Because we have What's an average sales sale? price. Let's do that. About 300. About okay. 300. Right. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty substantial for our first year. And so, um, you know, I was very proud of that and then ended up, like I said, um, um, having another baby. And so I really wanted to stay home and raise that, that last child of mine. And so I took a step back from my business and put my license in holding. And then, um, when my daughter started kindergarten, I got a phone call from a friend of mine and she said, Hey, you need to get back into selling real estate. I miss you so much. Uh, we had such a great time together. However, I'm at Keller Williams now, so you need to come here. You're going to love it, and your business is going to thrive. Now, I really didn't care where my business was, was associated, so I love her. So I thought, okay. So literally, it was the culture that got me to KW, which is kind of, you know, when you think about it, most of us, that's why we're here. Yep. So, um started the first class I went to, it was agent financials, Matt Fedek taught it. And I swear to goodness, my head literally blew off my shoulders because I realized at that point that I had been running my business like a hobby the whole time. Surprise. So got, yeah. So got really purposeful, really intentional and started on my way on my path through KW. And, um, so that was in 2011. So fast forward to Memorial day weekend, 2012. So that Friday, I went to a luxury listing appointment in Naperville, and I was super excited because back then, a $650,000 house here was a big deal, right? And so I went, and the folks were super nice. They said, oh, yeah, we want to list with you. Come back on Tuesday. Um, we want to do some painting and some yard work, and we'll do all of the paperwork and, and everything then. So I thought, perfect. What a great way to start a three-day weekend, right? So I sail through the weekend. My husband and I go to a wedding on Saturday. Um, I had a birthday party for my father on Sunday and on Memorial Day, we had guests, uh, just neighbors over for a barbecue. So it wasn't out of the ordinary for us, right? Like we were a young couple, we were just having a good time. So that Memorial, Memorial Day night, uh, about 1030, uh, I rolled over to kiss my husband goodnight and he said that my eyes went back and my arms got stiff and I stopped breathing. At first he thought I was just joking like, ooh, rough weekend, but then he realized I was not breathing. So. At that point, we have twin boys. They were 15 and a half at the time. Uh, one of them got on the phone with 911, and the other one took my young daughter across the street to a neighbor's house. And my husband started doing CPR immediately. He'd never done it, but my son that was on the phone with 911 was telling him what to do. Um, it took about eight minutes for the ambulance to get to my home. Uh, they shocked me seven times to restart my heart. Now, typically they stop at five, so besides realtors, EMTs are my favorite people. <laughs> I'll tell you, Tara Moat, she was the most amazing human being to actually see me laying there and keep going, right? And so um, so the next morning I was at the hospital, um, I coded again. They shocked me three more times. Um, I was only at 5% of heart function, so they had given me the last rites at one point. Um, then they saw a little bit of hope and then it diminished again. They gave me the last rites for a second time. Um, I was on the heart lung machine. I, you know, so a doctor at the University of Chicago Hospital heard about my situation and they uh, sent the medevac copter and flew me to Chicago. Um, I was put on heart transplant list and for whatever reason, and I have to knock on wood for this, but by the grace of God, my heart started to heal itself. So, um, did you know got, that you had any heart issues at all? I know, and I, and I still don't, which is crazy. That's the weirdest thing. So, um, yeah, it was not. So I was in a coma for 12 days, and I was in the hospital for 23. Um, I left with a defibrillator that my body actually rejected, 
And so um, I wore a defibrillator vest for eight months, which looks very much like a bomber's vest. <laughs> and so when I, would travel, oh yeah, when I would travel to Austin for training, my OP peep and I would travel together and he'd say, see you in the bar, Shelly, because he knew I was going to go get strip shirt searched. And they, uh, oh my gosh, it was awful. But um, for fun anyway. traveling. So um, then after the FDA finally approved the subcutaneous defibrillator, they implanted one of those in my side, which I now have. I was one of 2,500 people in the world that had the first generation on. So I was in a study for a while. So it's pretty cool. I've got my second one now implanted, but um, yeah. So, so go back that, for a second. I, I obviously want to hear the rest of this, but how, how does that happen if you don't have heart issues? And you said your heart started to heal it, itself. Was that from the shocking and the CPR and everything? I don't know. You know I think they're they really have not been able to tell you. Yeah. So they don't know what happened. They don't know what caused it. Um, so and some of day, us are a little weirded out by the uncertainty we have right now. That's some pretty major uncertainty in your body. Well, I guess, I mean, I guess the good part was, is there was no symptoms. So I didn't have to worry about it. It just happened. Right. But when you wake up in the hospital and you have no clue how you got there or what happened to you, it's very unnerving. And I'm not the best patient, so um, I wonder why me. that is. I know. Well, they have you strapped down when you're in a coma, and so um, I was trying to, as I was coming out of it, was to break free, and so I actually sprained my wrist. <laughs> um, and because of where I was, the University of Chicago Hospital is a teaching hospital, and so when I did wake from my coma. They wanted to bring a class of doctors in to watch me have the innovation tube removed. But the minute they took those suckers off my hands, I was fully on my own tube. Wow. So again, not the best patient, but I do appreciate those folks who are helping me. Um, but anyway, so um, let's see. So after obviously um, 23 days in the hospital, that's almost a month, right? And being yep. in quarantine now for 66 days, we kind of know what that time frame, how long that is, right? Yep. And um, during that time, the folks in my market center, now you got to understand, I was agent number 52, so it wasn't a huge office, but I never went in except for training. I didn't have a space there, right? I wasn't well known. And, um, but the people there made sure that every night that there was a meal at my home, not just for my family, but for my parents, my um, siblings, their spouses, wow. um, that they made sure that my kiddos got to driver's ed, softball practice, piano lessons, orthodontist appointments. They basically ran my life for me when I wasn't able to. And the first thing I got to do when I was well enough, two months after getting out of the hospital, was to go to that closing for that luxury listing appointment that I had gone on that weekend of Memorial Day. And um, somebody in our office had listed, marketed, negotiated, sold that home for me. And I wanted them to keep the commission. I didn't earn that. And um, they wouldn't even keep a penny of it. So when you talk about culture and you talk about people, just selfless people really caring deeply for one another, you know, that's, I, I mean, our market center is a, a huge, just a guiding light of that. Um, and so when Pete Economos, our operating partner asked me if I was interested in being in leadership, I said, absolutely, 100%. I want to take care of the people that took care of me and mine when I couldn't. And so by filling the buckets of our agents, fills mine. Yeah. And so for me, being able to um, be that MCA, be that mama, um, I'll tell you what, there's no, it's not work. It's not a J-O-B. It's who I am. Yeah. And so it's just a natural fit for me. And so as time progressed, though, our office grew. And once Karen Prawl joined, we doubled in size the, size the first year and doubled again the next. And so we, you know, we're sitting at about 450 agents now. And um, at about 100 and I'm guessing about 150, 175 agents, she said to me, I don't think that you are an MCA because she could feel me being stretched and pulled, right? So we have our two behavioral types. One is our adaptive, right? Who we are when people are watching. And then our natural style, who we are just, just joyfully going through days, right? And so for me, um, I was being stretched too much. So you were having to adapt constantly. Oh my goodness. And yeah. the bigger the market center gets, I mean, anybody so, who, who's yeah. you know, seen and, something go from 50 to 300 or 400 agents, it's a 
it's a different world. Crazy. And so for me, I, um, I want to love on the people, right? I want to get out and I want to help. I want to, I want to hug. I want to just, you know, I just want to make sure everybody's needs are met. And so I justify that in my head by saying, okay, so during the day when everybody's here, you're going to be out there and loving on them. And then when, um, when are you going to do the financials, right? When are you going to close the door and crunch the numbers? Well, I would go in on Saturday and Sunday mornings at like 3 a.m. And I'd stay, it's crazy now that I think about it. And I'd stay till about 10 in the morning when my family would be up and moving around or sports would start. And it just was not, it, it just not sustainable not, there. Oh gosh, it's not sustainable. So um, that's when she said to me, you are in the wrong seat on my bus. We need to just take you and move you over two seats to the right to an assistant team leader role. Now you can live in your passion and help serve and grow others. And so that's where all of a sudden that switch in my head, I've been living in joy ever since then, right? So when was that? So the the heart incident was Memorial Day 2012. 2012, and then, um, so then started as the MCA in 2013, and then did that uh, for about three years. And then when Karen came in 2015, it was almost instantaneous. She said when she walked into my office for the first time and she saw it, I'm a very visual person and Kristen and Wendy will, will verify, like my office looks like a cheerleader threw up. And <laughs> <laughs> I have to have things that make me happy. Right. And so, um, she said, you're not an MCA. <laughs> so it was actually just a really perfect switch in, in, I've not looked back. And then uh, beginning of last year, she was graciously um, enough to um, have me be co-team leader. So now, um, you know, I get to benefit, like we have another private mastermind with Gary Keller and things. So it's, uh, it's really awesome. It fills my bucket every day. Awesome. 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 So that, that I love that Um, there is, you know, a really good, uh, what, what, I don't really want to say ending, but next chapter after, after the, the heart thing, what happened with your family during that time? It had to be terrifying for your kids and your husband. I'll tell you what, my husband, um, my husband actually won a, an award from the American Heart Association. He was um, congratulated, obviously, for saving my life um, through the CPR, because if it wasn't for him, uh, that eight minutes, that would have been a game changer for me. Would have been enough, yeah. Yeah, so um, he has a lot of post-traumatic stress involved with that. Um, he and I just celebrated our 16th wedding anniversary, and, um, you know, we just, we work through it. He cries a lot. He um, he's, a, he's just a beautiful person. He's 61 years old, and he um, he's so proud of me and everything that I've accomplished. And it gives him such pleasure to see me so joyful in doing what I do on a daily basis and, and loving it. So um, my kiddos never even thought for one second that mama wasn't coming home. They have a very strong resolve. They have, um, they're, they're very faithful. And so uh, it was never a question. They just, they just wondered when I was going to wake up. Wow. That's that is yeah uh, i didn't expect that side um awesome awesome so so you had two months of recovery after you got out of the hospital what was that like and i'm asking and here here's where i want to see the kind of the parallel we are all stuck at home for most of us it's been two months maybe going into three and we're crazy but we're healthy right? And you were stuck because you weren't healthy and there was a, a process to get through. You probably had to be pretty intentional about it. I did. So um, originally when I first woke up, I guess their main concern was that there would be either vision or memory issues. And to this day, I still do not remember uh, going on that listing appointment on that Friday. I don't remember the wedding I attended. I don't remember the birthday party. And I can't for the life of me remember who was at the barbecue or what I made. My kids told me I had I had chicken prepared three different ways, and I'm thinking, why didn't I write that down? I don't <laughs> but, but I really so I believe that the body and the brain um, protects us from trauma. Um, and so once in a while, I'll have a little flash of something. We went to a restaurant about a year ago with some neighbors and. We walk into the restaurant and they said something to me like, it's amazing to be back here again. And I just looked at them and I said, what are we talking about? And they said, yeah, the wedding reception was here 
at Magiano's. And I, and I did not remember that. So everything that I shared with you about my story is what I've been told from other people. Cause obviously I slept through the whole thing. Yeah. I slept through my first helicopter ride. Apparently I was probably naked too. Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, um, you go to party more often. I know. <laughs> so, um, but it's funny because my neighbors, we're a very close knit little block here. And my neighbors, anytime a ambulance or fire truck rolls up or down our street, the neighbors all come running over here. Yeah. And well, because would, everybody, it's kind of a community PTSD, right? Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. But my, so the doctors, thankfully I had no vision and my memory for the most part was intact. We did, a, um, I was supposed to go to therapy afterwards, primarily it was for my wrist for spraining it. Um, I know. And then, um, they did work on my cognizant skills to make sure that I was, you know, I had, I played memory flashcards and things. I literally was supposed to be in that rehab for, uh, four days a week for a month. And I ended up, my total time was only 10 hours and they released me. So somebody wow. wanted it to be over. So the rest of my recovery time was basically, uh, the wound care from my incision from, my defibrillator and things like that and, and kind of learning, learning a new normal for me then. And, um, yeah, so. So when, when you kind of were told or figured out something pretty big had happened, did, did fear ever hit you? You, you, know, you just are so nonchalant about this, like, nah, you know. <laughs> well, you know what? So it was just another Memorial Day, no biggie. Day. No, so for me, I very faithful person. Um, I've always been super positive. I'm not this way because of anything that's happened to me. I've always been this person. And so for me, it was, okay, wow, this happened. And I did have some funky experiences when I was wherever I was. And I saw people from my family that had gone before me. Now, whether I dreamt it or if it was real or whatever, in my mind, I was there. Yeah. And it was a um, beautiful experience. It was like that, like you read in the books and you hear in the movies or whatever. It's it was a beautiful, bright light, and it was the faces of my grandmother and grandfather, my other grandmother, and my former sister-in-law who had passed a couple years before of cancer. And <laughs> it was crazy because here were these lovely, gorgeous human beings from my life, whom I love dearly. And they weren't calling me, they weren't beckoning me, they were just loving me, right? And I just felt safe and I felt, it's, you can't even really put it in words the way I felt, but that's why now, um, and, and Karen Prawl and I talk about this all the time, I have no fear of dying. I, I know where I'm going. I know who's there when I get there. I know how, how it feels, this light, this warmth, this beauty. And whether people think I'm crazy or not, that's okay. Cause I think about it and I go, Oh geez, don't ever talk about that. But you know, when people ask me, I share it. I don't ever share that part of it unless somebody says what, you know, how did you, well, what I love. And I'll just make you feel a little bit more comfortable. I love that you shared that. I didn't know you had that experience. And my grandmother years and years, 30 years ago had a similar experience. So as she got close to the end of her life this year, she was joyful. She knew where she was going back to and she was ready. It, oh. it, it was, it was amazing. So and that's why with you, you and I have that connection because I always tell you everything is hashtag only love. Right. Yep. And for me, that's because I know that that's where, what she's got now. And so that's where the burden of everything that we deal with on a daily basis, right? Think about all the minutia in our lives and all the crazy things that we worry about or we're fearful of that make no sense. Right. None of it matters. The only thing that matters are the people that are in our lives that we love truly to our core and that's it and you're human so you have to have those moments yeah, yeah. absolutely so how do you what is your trigger to, re, to remind yourself to just get back to that that only love place um i guess you know like i, I have a teenage daughter now that's starting to drive and boys oh and god I, bless you oh my god i i'm telling you what i have twin boys that are 23 and they were a piece of cake compared to this daughter of mine and I tell her all the time, you were supposed to be the good one. <laughs> but um, People grow into the conversations you have around them. <laughs> I'm working it, trust me. No, I think that it all comes down to um, 
when when you question anything that you do or you hear or you say and you start thinking okay um where does that fit in the big picture i go right there like does this it, you know is it something that really matters or is it something i think matters so yeah kind of takes me yeah. back we we'll probably have had a few of those moments while we've been uh, at home. I've had fewer for me, but taking on the, the weight of everybody else's fear and anxiety, then that can get me there sometimes. And you know, it's so funny because I travel a lot with my, my partners and things at work. And when we go to trainings or we go to family reunion or mega camp, and I have this one specific wonderful person in my life, Cindy Pavleccio, and she's so adorable, but she hates taking off from Midway Airport. So O'Hare obviously is this huge grand airport. Midway is a much smaller um, airport here in Chicagoland. And so the runways are very short. <laughs> so so she, yeah, it's usually Navy pilots cause they can hit the hook, you know, when they land. But uh, she does not like taking off. So um, I talked her into flying with me out of there to go somewhere and she literally, she left claw marks on my hands. And I just looked at her and I said, Cindy, listen, Everything I've been through, do you think God was going to bring me back to just take me down on a plane? I said, just hold my hand. You're going to be fine. Trust me. You're going to be fine. And fly she, with Karen. Hashtag fly with Karen. <laughs> so, that was a game changer for her because she thought about it, you know, for whatever reason. And she was like, you're right. I'm good. I'm good. So, you know, and my husband and I had a similar experience. We went somewhere and, and the turbulence was bad and we were in lightning and thunder and the plane's oh. doing this. He said, I looked over at you and you were actually laughing. I was like, bring it on. Like in Forrest Gump, you know, Lieutenant Dan in the store, bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that that's funny. I just know every time I get on a plane, I'm likely going to die. So I make peace with it and then I'm good. <laughs> I still hate to fly. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, all right. So so here we are. are. You guys aren't unquarantined yet, obviously, because you're in your sunroom. Um, has it relaxed a little bit? Do you get to go see your people? Because that is that has been a hard part, I'm sure, for you too. Uh, that has been so hard. I mean, I, I am the hugger, right? I'm so Mo is who I want to be when I grow up just so everybody knows. And my entire market center knows that. Right. And so she's the velvet hammer. I want to be the velvet jackhammer. So <laughs> for me, it's all about the people. So no, um, I haven't been back there, um, but once or twice and, um, I am starting next week to go back. I saw some of our ALC members from our ALC meeting yesterday via Zoom. They were in the office. I'm like, okay, our staff is there. So June 1st is our official day back. Um, and I plan to kind of drip myself in there next week and kind of get prepared, so. And not appropriate for this particular Zoom, but we should touch base because we're mulling over how we're gonna do it safely. Mm -hmm. And I know, I, I think Illinois and California probably have very similar rules and how what you have to do. So we, we should chat. Oh yeah, I can send you our plan. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so now going back into the office and we've got, what are we, uh, June 1st, literally halfway through the year. Um, what do you think the rest of the year is going to look like? What's, what's your plan? Well, for us, I know that um, for the market center, it's obviously it's the growth and production of our agents. They, um, I think that we are going to have an amazing June and July and most likely August, because all of these people, and my girls are shaking their heads, all of our people have been either temping off of the market or waiting to go on, and the influx of listings is going to be crazy, and because our people have been doing those care calls consistently every day, like I am so proud of our people and the effort that they have put forth in putting others first, it just warms my heart. They are all going to be winning at a super high level and they're all going to be so busy. So I well, and that's what I'm telling people right now, the ones who have been, you know, in the game, be ready for being pretty out of balance unless yeah. you've already got the leverage in place. Um, and, we're, and we're telling our folks now, I mean, you tell your buyers like this week and next week, you better be able to pull that trigger because you are going to be competing with all the rest of the buyers that are going to be going out there. And it's, you know, it's crazy. So it's, it's both ways. And the sellers were like, get your listings on right now because the whole market's going to open up and, you know, uh, but I think we're going to see prices stay nice and stable. I think we're going to see a lot of movement and um, I'm hoping that my, my agents are super, super busy. And I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure some of them will be the ones I know. Yeah. 
at least 20% of them. Yeah. Um, and I think for the market center, the way it looks for us is we had a slowdown, shutdown of um, testing for our real estate schools. And we host a real estate school in our market centers. Yeah. So it's just been in the talent. Oh my gosh. The people that have been laid off that have called and we've talked to about going to real estate school or career nights and then they're going to real estate school. The talent pool has opened up. I am talking rock stars. I have people that already have pipelines that haven't even gone to school yet. So Absolutely. it's crazy. So I, I expect a big surge in growth as well. And we're still adding agents here. You know, I think we've added, we added eight last month. We added six more so far this month. So, I mean, people are still, they're right, still but just like the agents, we're gonna, uh, and thank you for saying that. I think some of my, my uh, leadership team is on here today. Um, we'll have that influx also. We'll have to have our systems dialed in so we can handle the onboarding um, yep. as people come on board. Yeah, we're revamping our uh, mentorship and, and PC program to adjust and we want to make sure that we are ready because uh, especially being these new talented people coming out of the gates, they want to, they're thoroughbreds. They just want to start running. So we have to make sure that we can keep up with them. <laughs> right. Well, and they'll have income to make up for, right? They'll be urgent and motivated. Best kind of agents to have. I know it. <laughs> um, all right. So if, if you're talking to your agents and you know what you've been through, right, and you've got this deep sense of faith that, that everything's going to work out and be okay, um, when they don't, when your agents are stuck in a dark place, what do you do to move them forward? What words of advice do you have? What, what path do you put them on? Well, so I challenge them to, it really comes down to choices, right? So if you set your goals and you say you want this, but your activities say you want this. How are we going to bridge that gap to get you what you want? What's, what's living inside of there? And how do we remove fear out of that equation? Uh, Karina Logan was on our power up this morning and she's, I mean, she's wonderful about really getting you to kind of dial it really in deep where it's, it does come down to your commitment to the choices you make. Because when you say yes to something else, you're saying no to something else. And so or you're going to have to say no to something else. Yeah. And yeah. so you have to make sure that your priorities are laser on because otherwise you're going to have missed opportunities. There's going to be regret, right? Then you get the resignation and then it's on to greener pastures. And we don't want that. What we want to do is just keep filling that bucket layer by layer so that people can keep moving forward. And Karen says this all the time. It's not zero to a hundred. It's zero to one one to two, two to three, right? And so- Trust the process. To, yeah, you have to take those steps because um, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? And you have to always give yourself the grace that you need to keep moving forward. Um, because like I said, it's a choice. It's happy or crappy, right? What do you want to be? I love that, happy or crappy. <laughs> and by the way, uh, depending on what you choose, you're also infecting the people around you. 100%. When I've got somebody that comes in with their monkey mindset and they just, they're Debbie Downer, I, I ask them point blank, so what brought you here today in this mood, right? Because I tell them when they first join our market center, um, you got to be three things to work there, right? You've got to be like-minded, so you want to build or grow something. You have to be a big thinker, so you have to be able to cast the vision for whatever that business is going to look like. And the third and most important piece is you have to be nice. Because if you're not nice, we invite you to leave. And we're very firm on that. We have very high integrity behind that. We've, since I've been there, we've invited about six agents to leave. Uh, we had a $22 million producer that we said bye-bye to because it, he wasn't nice. Um, but I think that that part, when I give them that, those three pillars that we want and we expect and our standards, and then I tell them, if you're having a bad day, you have two choices. You have the choice to come in here and completely change your mood so when you leave, you're singing. Or don't come in with your rake and spread your BS around and get it on anybody else because I don't want to smell it. And usually when you give them that, those two options, they're like, yeah. okay. So they'll either get up and go and start working or they're going to get up and they're going to leave. And either way is fine with me, right? I'm there to support them and their choices. Well, and I'm sure you've heard Kay Evans say over the years in the ALC clinic, if you're having a bad day attitudinally, just stay away. That's kind Absolutely. of my, my self rule. She's one of my favorite people. Yeah. I'm telling you, she's got a great outlook on life and, and, and truly it's, you, you got to live it that way. Just yep. do it. 
Yeah. And it is constantly a choice. I think it, it can seem right now with just the flurry of negativity around everything that it's not a choice. You just get sucked into it. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. Totally is. So I have, I told you I have 23 year old twin boys. One of them is a union welder and the other one's actually a realtor in our office. Oh, and, cool. um, you know, he did not go to four years of college and um, he's getting his MBA right now in real estate because what he's seeing, what he's doing, the commitment he's making, um, it's, it's really, it's, it's great to see. And yet he gets his monkey mind and I'm like, mm -mm -mm, I don't even want to listen to it. Right. You, you just zoom that somewhere else. Cause I can't. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and then he takes that minute to get right and real. And then it's like, and we're moving again. So I do the same thing at home as I do at, at the office and, and, you know, very consistent. <laughs> I, it, it's probably not appropriate. I got to tell you that the thing when you were telling your story and with your husband saving your life, my brain went to, oh my gosh, you can't really fight with him, can you? Like, he <laughs> saved your life. So you can't. Well, I said to him. So a funny thing, when we, we you know, when we first got married, we used to um, stay up and watch the the murder mysteries, the whodunits of, you know, it's always the, the husband that kills the wife and the wife that kills the husband. I go, there you were. You had a choice. <laughs> And now you're stuck with me. <laughs> so no, we really, we don't, we never fought anyway, but now it's, you know, you just work it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, that's, that was kind of my point is saying you're, you're just so positive and making such good choices all the time. It's probably a non-issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and still. <laughs> well, he has to put up with all this. So he's, he's good. <laughs> it's all good. I, 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 at some point need to come to Naperville and feel the energy in your office because when we get to get together at family reunion or mega camp or whatever, I mean, it, it's palpable energy and I'm sure it is in the walls there too. Yeah. So I actually, um, for the longest time I had my office, it was on a corner. And when I would do career nights, I'd walk folks through and I'd give them a tour of the office and I'd tell them, um, I literally work on the corner of rainbow and sunshine because that's how it feels for me. <laughs> And so one of our agents owns a trophy shop. And so she had little placards made. So it is literally now the corner of rainbow and sunshine. So it's, you know, I, I say on Sunday nights, it's my favorite time of the week because I know that on Monday morning, I get to go to the clubhouse and play with my friends all week. And so, so cool. I know. And so I've missed that. I'm craving it. So I cannot wait. Cannot yeah. Wait. yeah. It's just a couple days away. Yay. And it will be a little different, obviously, right? Um, we have to pivot. It will, and I'll tell you, I'm a little nervous because self-control is not high on my talent list. And um, I have been able to see a few people and it, it's immediate, oh, I can't hug you. It, it's actually really hard. I know. Um, and a little- you have, you have to get permission. Yeah. Is it okay? Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but then if they tell me no, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be like, okay, I get it. <laughs> All right, dear. So how can we help you? This little group of agents, um, what can we do for you? Well, I would just really like to know if anybody has any questions. I mean, it's just, it's fun to be on and, and have, you know, people I don't know, people that obviously adore you because I'm one of those people. So, um, you know, my girls, Kristen and Wendy, they are two of my favorite humans. So, you know, this is, this is like a little love fest for me. <laughs> well, it is every day. I, seriously, you should come on. It's, it's a great group. Um, I don't see any questions. I'm looking at who is here today. You share a lot of similar energy to Evie, who is, uh, you know, controls my life, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, right. Wendy, you've got a fan club too, dear. Yay, Wendy. This girl is the most powerful referring, referring partner. I swear, she knows somebody from everywhere. And I'm so proud of her because talk about building a huge business on referrals. It's phenomenal. Wendy, Wendy. My Wendy. Myself. Wendy, how much, how much in volume did you sell last year in referrals? Um, six million. Uh-huh, that was six million. Yeah. And she knows her numbers. Yay! Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. Brian Garrity, one of my favorites. <laughs> nice. Yay. All right. So I don't see any questions over there. Um, 
it, interesting I'm finding out with Zoom, Karen, is people don't raise their hand very often. <laughs> you know what? We we go through the same thing too. I had um well I had you on ours, right? Yeah. And I literally had to call on people and say, Okay, what do you want to know? <laughs> yep. It's They're fine. shy. So for me, so I talked about the reason that I got to KW was basically the culture piece because a friend of mine invited me. And I will tell you that the reason that I stay is to make sure, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm part of that whole infinite game mentality. So I need to leave this market center better than I found it. And so I am now looking for my legacy builders to take those torches and run with them at some point. Yeah. You know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm 57. Do I want to be there? Yes. Are they going to take me out of there kicking and screaming? Yes. But at some point, I need the others behind me to step up. And so- um, Well, there's what we can do for you. Send you those, some of those people might fit the bill. There you go. And you know, it's, uh, it's by just pouring into them because we really are focused now on the ones raising their hands and not gonna waste our time on the people that don't wanna grow or don't want help. And, and those people, especially right now, are self-selecting out which is totally fine because it makes room. Diana would always say this. She'd say, you know, you've got those people in a market center where you hit the ball and then have to drag Tommy. Hit the ball and then drag Tommy. No more dragging. Right. Leave right. them. Because yeah. we are only as strong as our weakest link, right? And so, and, and finding those five people that you surround yourself with because you're the sum total of the five people, right? And so who are your five and making sure, and they change. And in different instances, you need five different ones, right? Yep. But it's, uh, so always having a powerful group of um, peers that you can just bounce things off of and they pour into you, you pour into them. And then the people that you want to grow into, because what one thing that Karen Peral and Pete Economos have done for me is that they have taught me to think bigger always. And so I, in my head, I, I'm just a people pleaser. So I always figure out how to plus one thing and so this is it's a great exercise for okay that was great but what can i do even better next time so uh we, we what, I, what i one thing that i've also observed with your team you and karen and pete you you are so different you know you've got the strategic thinkers you've got the heart led and it's it's a special team um mm -hmm. and you guys can do whatever you want to do <laughs> It's powerful stuff. And today is our 10 year anniversary, <clears throat> excuse me, for our market center. So that's a big deal. He, he bought it 10 years ago. And um, I'll tell you what, it's just, it makes, it makes my heart happy that this is where the path that it's been going. Because when you pour so much love into something and you feed it and you water it and you give it sunlight and it grows to something even bigger and better than you ever imagined. I mean, that's winning. That is winning. That is winning. And and I think many of you have your fingers now in other market centers, right? And there's other opportunities that you're creating because of the success you've had there. Yeah, this crazy little gal who uh, used to run her business like a hobby, right? In um, nine short years, I'm now an investor in three market centers, right? Um, I have a phenomenal profit share. Um, Kristen Jungles is my profit share warrior. Um, I am blessed to have her in my tree. And she tells me all the time, Kristen, how much money do you want me to make in profit share every year? So Karen Shawley called me a few years ago and invited me to coffee at Starbucks. And by doing so will absolutely change my life. And my, um, the only way that I can repay her is I named her for my profit share. And my goal is to get her to $100,000 a year. Who so doesn't want somebody like Kristen? Yeah, yeah, we all need one of you. Come on. I mean, seriously, I never asked her to do that. I, I mean, you know, she could have named anybody in that market center and she named me and, you know, she was the one that said yes to the meeting. The reason I called her, I am not your typical team leader that goes by any rhyme or reason. I loved her name, Jungles. I thought it was adorable. So I called her, just cold called her. And invited her to coffee and she doesn't even drink coffee but she was open to the opportunity and that's what it is when people are open when i call i smile and dial all day long right and when i my script as a team leader is i would love to have a conversation with you about business and opportunity and then i shut up and if they say no i'm not interested i say an opportunity okay thank you have a great day right 
because I don't want to be in business with somebody that's not open to an opportunity, yeah. right? You don't have to say yes to the opportunity, just be open to it. And so Jungles was all in and she never looked back and she's building a big life now. And she's changed the lives of so many other people by bringing them to KW. So um, I'm, this is what I mean, right? I'm blessed by these people. Wendy sit, and Kristen both sit on our ALC. They're phenomenal. Brian loves Wendy. I mean, <laughs> phenomenal human beings, their hearts are way bigger than any part of their body. Like they are just enormous hearts. So- um, Well, we attract who we are, dear. Well, I'll tell you what, they just, they're, they play all in all the time. And um, yeah, I mean, that's who you got to surround yourself with, people. Yeah. And leave the ones that you would have to drag. Just leave them. Bye-bye, Felicia. <laughs> yeah. I, and that's why I, I'm so happy you get to go back to the office. And it's inspiring me to, like, really get our plan in place. Because same thing. It's it's a nest of positivity, um, you know, that... I write on all the windows, me. right, with a dry erase marker. There's, there's positivity statements all over that place. And... Underneath our uh, our clock in our pit area, in the gut milk letters, it says gut culture, question mark. Like everything around there just reminds people about um, being grateful, uh, being thankful and serving each other. Because nobody succeeds alone. Nope, nope. And by the way, it's more fun. I know. It's the clubhouse, you get to play with your friends. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't, I don't know about you, but when you're having fun, it's not work. And who wants to work? I don't want to work, right? We grew the office by 207 people last year. It wasn't work. That was just, it's like being a fairy godmother and going with the way you get a new life and you get a new life. And look at you, right? We're changing lives. It's so much fun. Awesome. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for, for joining us today, um, right on the heels of Memorial Day. Um, I will post the video. Evie's on here. Evie is, we, we have, um, show tunes that are going to be going on constantly in the office. There she is. We've got a lot of performers and characters. Uh, so we do have a lot of fun too. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Are you doing anything fun for Memorial Day? I saw somebody, po Ann Rosen posted yesterday that she's going to go spend Memorial Day in Indiana because it's open. Uh, ah. And there's more to do, I guess. Well, we're supposed to actually have nice weather, which is a big deal for us because our weather has just been like this. And so um, we have a really sweet little fire pit and everything in the backyard. So I think we'll invite all of those wonderful neighbors. Just everybody can sit. The chairs are about, you know, six feet apart. And just we'll just hang out and just have a good time. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, hope to see you in like flesh soon. Absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, your, your story just touches me and thank you for sharing it. We do have fun, don't we? Oh yeah. Whenever I see you, it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Must. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope that each and every one of you on here has a, a very great and blessed Memorial Day weekend and just keep pushing forward. Listen to Ashley, whatever she tells you to do, just do it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> thank you. Thank All you right. for that. <laughs> All right, dear. Talk to you soon. All right, honey. Thank Everybody you. Everybody have a great, safe weekend. See you, honey. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.